Hi, this is Pete Madsen for Acoustic Guitar, and I'm here to talk about my slide guitar lesson in the October issue 2014. Um, a lot of things to talk about in slide. I'll try not to be too talky about it, but a um, few things you need to know. Um, what we're going to do today's slide lesson will be in standard tuning, and I only play in standard tuning for slide when I'm playing with a band or accompanied by somebody else. If I'm playing finger style with slide, I'll often be playing in an open tuning such as open D or open G. Um, and that's where I'm, you know, unaccompanying, keeping an alternating bass kind of thing. But I think for, if you're just starting out on slide, it's good to start off in standard tuning because you're probably more familiar with uh, where the notes are and so forth. And you can really focus on your tone. Uh, you notice I have a slide on my finger here. Um, I'm using a ceramic slide. Uh, there are a lot of different choices for slide. You could have metal, you could have brass, you could, uh, well, you could use any, pretty much lots of different things. Uh, pot, top of a bottle, bottle top from a wine bottle or a beer bottle, um, a socket uh, from a socket set. Some people like that. Um, it's your choice. It's kind of nice to have a different selection of different materials, lengths, weight so you can experiment and see what works best for you. For acoustic guitar, I prefer a heavier slide. Uh, the ceramic has a good amount of mass, weight. Um, if I'm playing electric slide, I will often sometimes use a thinner slide because I have the amp working for me. I don't need the slide to produce as much sound. So two different applications. So you'll, your technique and your choice of materials can change depending on if you're playing acoustic or electric. Uh, you'll notice the slide I'm using is about, I think it's about two and a half inches long. Um, I want the slide to be cover all the strings, although in this case for today's lesson it's not really necessary. I could, I could be using a shorter slide. Um, I also tend to put the slide on my pinky and that's because of my a proclivity for playing finger style where I want my fingers free to be able to fret chords and so forth. Uh, some people like to put the slide on their ring finger, some middle finger. Uh, if you're playing finger style probably you'll find nine times out of ten that people will use it on their pink, use the slide on their pinky. Um, but that's totally up to you. Um, if you're playing unaccompanied like we are today you could try it on different fingers. My slide fits rather snugly, not too snugly. I want it to be able to get it off my fingers. Um, but if you have a, a slide that fits kind of loose, you can compensate for that by putting some tissue or some uh, wax, candle wax, or just something so that your finger fits in there snugly so you know, it won't fall off. Uh, you don't want it to be too loose. It's harder to control if it's too loose. Um, okay, so let's talk about some ways to play slide in standard tuning. The lesson today is going to focus on a slow blues in E, which I'll play for you later on. Um, but the slide uh, lines I'll be playing will be mostly based on minor pentatonic scales. So you might want to go out and review your minor pentatonics. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of the scales today, but I'm going to play them on one string. For instance, um, the, the first example we have is going to be um, playing the minor pentatonic on the first string. So I would start open first string, third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, tenth fret, and twelfth fret. Okay, so that's the minor pentatonic on the first string. The minor pentatonic on the second string will start with the open second string. And then I go to the third fret and the fifth fret. By the way, that's E, and we're in the key of E, so that's my root note. And then I go up to the eighth fret, tenth fret, twelfth fret. So a lot of the examples we'll be playing will be centered around those two strings. Um, of course, you want to know the pentatonics on all six strings, but uh, um, you might want to review that later on. Uh, for the examples here, the first example 
is going to be the minor pentatonic on the first string using open strings against uh, slide notes. Let me play it for you once and I'll explain it. Okay, so I played an open string and then I slid into the third fret. I want you to notice that it's very important where the slide ends up. It's not going to be in between the fret. It's going to land right at the fret wire. That's the one thing you got to remember about slide. The intonation changes because you're not pressing down on the string. So you want your slide to be directed right at the fret wire. You'll notice I keep my hand pretty low for that first string. I have my slide slightly tilted out, if you see that. And then there's my first finger is resting on the string on the back side of the slide. This helps to dampen the sound and keep away unwanted overtones and, note and sounds that I, I might or might not want. So damping is a critical part of slide playing. Uh, in this case, I'm using my left hand to damp the strings. If I was playing electric, I would use more of my right hand to damp the strings, where I would actually place my hand all the way across the strings um, that um, I don't want to sound. All right, example two is um, I'm playing between two strings now. So as we move inwards on the fretboard with the slide, you might notice you need to tilt in with your slide a little bit. Okay. Well, so what I actually do is I'll tilt in, go to my first string, and tilt back out. So you're doing a lot of adjustment with the slide as you play different inner strings, call these inner strings, uh, or outer strings. Okay, so let me play the entire example too. One, two, three, four. So I was walking up the first string, third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. Okay, example three, I start to actually create some licks. Uh, let me play example three. So that one, I was working the second string, third string, fourth string. In example four, I, I kind of combine a couple of different ideas from example two and example three. Okay, and if you're familiar with those pentatonic scales, you could probably see that I'm using those kinds of scales, okay, without going into too much detail about pentatonic scales. In example five and six, uh, I'm actually creating more of a, a minor uh, triad, E minor triad. So example five. And let me take my slide off for a second. If you know this uh, E minor uh, chord, you can see I'm really kind of focusing the tones on the minor triad there. So that's really useful in combination with the uh, minor pentatonics. Uh, example six. Kind of using that same area, that same... Uh, uh, minor uh, E minor uh, chord. Uh, example seven, I'm going to work up the fretboard a little bit here. The 12th fret is a great place to play a lot of little slide lines. Uh, so example seven. I even worked up to the 15th fret. And one thing I didn't mention about your left hand is um, think of your left hand as having three points of contact when you play slide. you got the slide, obviously, that's on the strings, and it should be pretty gently resting on the strings. You don't need to press down. 
you've got that damping finger which I was talking about but also your thumb is back here providing you some stability uh, this is particularly important for vibrato um, when I do vibrato I'm gonna slide up to the note and I'll pull away from the note don't go past the note you don't want, you don't want this sounds like a rubber band but you want to come up to the pitch the note and my thumb is back here braced against the back of the guitar to help pull and give me a, a post that helps stabilize things and produce that vibrato um, you'll so you'll notice in example seven when I came up here that my thumb actually came up over the fretboard. This particular guitar uh, is 12 frets to the body. So I'm, I'm hitting the body of the guitar as I try to get up to the 15th fret and my thumb actually has to come up over the, the, um, the neck, the fretboard, and that's okay. Um, the farther you go up the neck, the easier it is to play slide because your strings are getting uh, farther and farther away from the fretboard. Um, it brings me to another point that I should have discussed earlier, um, which is guitar setup. Um, a lot of people like to set up their guitars specifically for slide. And what I mean by that is they'll use heavier gauge strings and they'll perhaps adjust the action so that the strings are up a little bit higher off of the fretboard. That keeps you from hitting, hitting the frets and making nasty noises. It makes it also easier to get a good sound. I use medium gauge strings on the guitars that I play slide on, uh, gauge 13 to 56, high to low. Um, that produces more tension, which is a good thing for slide. We don't want our strings to be too floppy. Um, you can also compensate in different ways uh, with the tension aspect. Uh, you could tune the guitar up or tune the guitar down. But since we're, we're not really dealing with open tunings here, I, I won't go into detail about that. We're talking specifically about uh, standard tuning. So um, let's go back to the exercises. Example eight, um, I'm gonna start up here at the 15th fret. Okay. And again, coming up above the fretboard to get that note at the 15th fret, um, it means I have to slant my slide a little bit and then sliding into those uh, notes at the 12th fret. Uh, example 9, I can actually play notes between scale tones, so this is kind of nice where I go. Always a nice sort of effect to kind of climb up the fretboard a little bit as you reach that climactic note. And example 10, um, 